You deserve you had nothing. Vindictive, hateful little. Get out of here. I'll get out when I'm good and ready. I'm gonna get Sean. What's the matter? Can't you fight your own battles? Get your hands off me, you witch! <laughs> Why you? I'll come to my house. What's up, everybody? Hope you all had a great day. Happy New Year. Hope you all had a wonderful New Year weekend and New Year's Day. Um, I am happy that it's a new year. It's time for a new start, new beginning with everything. Um, I haven't made any resolutions. I mean, not really. I haven't. So if you guys made any resolutions, let me know in the comments if you made them. Um, you don't necessarily have to tell me what they are if you don't want to. But I'm just asking. <laughs> but um, getting into this episode, GH, hot mess. Like, this episode was a hot freaking mess. Listen, let me just say this. I'm going to try to make this review quick. Um, I don't blame Lois. I, I don't blame Lois. And in my opinion, Lois has nothing to cry about. She has nothing to apologize for. Because she's doing something that everybody else didn't have the balls to do, which is confront Sonny and tell him the damn truth. You know what I mean? Like, you know, even though she didn't technically tell him, at least she, you know, put it out there that Ned wasn't the one who did it. And she know who did. You know what I'm saying? That his family was lying. At least she put that out there because it was time, you know, like it, it was time to tell him. So at least she had the stones to do it. Um, Olivia could be mad all she want to. At the end of the day, it needed to be done. You know? I don't blame Lois for throwing, you know, Sonny shooting Dante in Olivia's face because let's be honest, she's proven a point. Keeping those types of secrets can be deadly. Like, look what happened when Olivia kept the secret about Dante. Look what happened. Your son got shot, you know, because you chose to be quiet. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not laying all of that at Olivia's feet because it was other factors and other people involved. Um, But... She got a shoulder to blame for some of that stuff, too, you know. Um, so Olivia could be mad at Lois all she want. Lois ain't got nothing to apologize for. She did what needed to be done. She's known Sonny a long time as well. So she felt as a friend, she owed him that heads up. And I don't blame her. I would have did the exact same thing. Everybody else had months to tell Sonny. Nobody chose to say anything. You know what I'm saying? They all had ample time to tell him. So that's on them. And what irritated me was Michael trying to sit here and play the martyr with Sonny. Like, oh, you know, we're trying to protect everybody. And, you know, it was best for Ned to take the fall. Best for who? Best for you. At the end of the day, if Michael want to be a truth teller, why don't Michael just start telling Sonny how he sent Dex to set Sonny up so Sonny could go to prison? I bet you he not going to tell Sonny that. Oh, I bet you his narrow ass ain't going to say nothing about that one. Um... I'm glad that Sonny now knows, you know what I mean? Like now it's up to him whether or not he wants to continue this marriage to Nina, whether or not he wants to forgive her. So the ball is in his court at this point. Um, honestly, I hope, I hope maybe he might forgive her. I mean, I don't really care one way or the other in a way. I kind of, uh, I'm not going to say I don't care, but it's like, cause I kind of like him. I don't know. I'm on a fence with him and Nina as a couple. I'm 50-50 with it. But if he chooses to forgive her, I, you know, he ain't going to get no no, no anger from me from it. Uh, you know, that's his choice. That's still his wife at the end of the day. But um, it's up to Sonny at this point. You know, I know he's going to be pissed. I know he's going to rant and rave at her. I know that much. But I did like the scenes between her and Willow. I did love those scenes. You know, because Willow easily could have went back home and got a different dress or whatever. But she chose to come to Nina and she's really trying to have a relationship with her. I just hope now that the truth is out, I really hope that it doesn't mean that Willow and Nina are going to have to start back at square one. Because what Willow needs to understand is her mother is a flawed person. You know what I'm saying? Just like everybody else in that town. Yeah, she did what she did out of spite and, and being petty. But at the end of the day, 
let's not forget that those two people committed that crime. So, you know what I mean? Don't get too mad at her. Um, so I hope that that it doesn't bring them back to square one, you know, and that they could still kind of find their way to being a mother and daughter. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I really hope Willow chews Michael ass out because he knew about it and didn't even tell her. So I hope she get mad at him, too, because she's going to be mad at Willow. I mean, if Willow going to be mad at Nina, she need to be mad at Michael, too, because um, he definitely kept her in the dark. So anyway, moving on from that. Um, that whole scene with Sam and Dante, I loved it. But Sam was kind of irking me a little bit because she ain't got nothing to feel bad about. You know what I mean? And I love Lindsay Hart uh Lindsay um Hartley. I don't know I don't know what's going on with Kelly Monaco, but I hope she's doing okay. You know what I mean? Cause this is like another time where they had to bring a temp actress in, so I really hope she's doing well. But I love me some Lindsay though. Um But yeah, Sam ain't got nothing to apologize for or be ain't you know, or to be, you know, feel bad about where Drew is concerned because she made a decision without drew the same way drew made a decision without her at the end of the day it's it's different though drew made a life-changing decision like he made a decision about their child's education whereas sam is making a decision to say you know what you don't have to go to that school if you don't want to she don't have to include drew in it she's the custodial parent at the end of the day you know what i'm saying like she's the one with the child 24 7 drew just came back from australia he didn't think to stop by and check in on his daughter even though she could have been asleep you still could have looked in on her or something i mean he missed christmas with the girl he missed christmas with her and he missed new year's with her you know what i mean but yet this is the person making decisions about her education absolutely not he couldn't even be there for her for christmas no absolutely not um, so Sam ain't got nothing to feel bad about that little girl having nightmares about going to the school. So she should not go. And I agree a thousand percent with Dante. Sam is making the right call for her child. And I agree her and Drew, they need to sit down and talk and Drew need to get on the same page with Sam. At the end of the day, he needs to consult with Sam if he wants changes and scouts routine and stuff like that. They need to talk about that and find out how it's going to affect their daughter because their daughter only agreed to go to that school because of what Drew wanted. She didn't want to disappoint him. And I'm glad Sam reassured her that, you know, her father not going to be mad at her, nor should he be. It's, you know, up to the parents to make the right decisions, but they also have to have Scout's input on this. She's old enough to speak her mind, you know. So I'm glad that, you know, Dante had her back on that stuff. You know, I'm really loving Sam and Dante and I was on the fence about them as a couple, but I'm loving them so far. Um, you know, he really got her back. He's really stepping into that role as a surrogate father, you know, stepdad or whatever, semi stepfather for Scout and stuff like that. And Danny and I love it, you know. Um, so moving on from that. Carly and Drew. Ugh. My whole thing is, why is it Pentonville that's changed Drew? Drew went through way worse when he was under Victor's, you know, authority and stuff like that. Like when he was a hostage um, of Victor and stuff like that, he went through way worse. But yet Pentonville was the thing that changed him. How come being, you know, controlled and beaten and all that stuff on Cassinai Island, how did that not change him? Like you would think he would have PTSD after that. You know what I'm saying? He never went to a shrink. Nothing about that. That's kind of weird to me. Um... And I'm not surprised that he damn near blew the deal in Australia. See, that's why he shouldn't be a part of business storylines with ELQ. Because at the end of the day, Drew's not a real businessman. Like, he sucks as a businessman when it comes to big business. Like, he was about to blow the deal, but yet he acts like he's more superior than Ned. Um, but yet he was about to screw up the whole deal like an idiot. I just don't like Drew for shit. I'm going to be honest with you. We in a whole new year, and I still don't like him. Uh <laughs> And I don't think nothing's going to change about that, to be quite honest. Um, But yeah, it's like he's sitting there talking about, oh, I was the family peacekeeper for the quarter mains and I'm done doing that. Sir, when were you ever the peacekeeper for the Qs? Since when? Since when has Drew ever been a peacekeeper for that family? Oh, how can Ned do this? Oh, sir, shut up. Ned don't owe that boy no loyalty. Please, Ned barely know him. Um... And I do mean barely know him. So I don't know why he would think Ned, of all people, owe him some type of loyalty when he don't. Um. So anyway, 
I was so sad. It was so sad though when Carly got that phone call from um, the embassy in Amsterdam about Bobby. I said I was not ready for those scenes. I was not ready because this is the start of you know Bobby's memorial and stuff like that. I, I'm not ready for none of this. I'm really not to say goodbye to Barbara Jean. Oh my lord. Um, that's sad. I miss Jackie. I really do. Every time I see like her pop up on my Twitter feed and stuff like that, I miss her. Like. I really do. That was my boo. Rest in peace. I wasn't ready for this because, I mean, we've known weeks in advance, well, months in advance that this was coming, that they were going to start doing these scenes and whatnot. I wasn't ready for none of it. Not an inch of it. I was like, oh, my. And the look, I ain't even going to lie. Laura Wright, she killed it, though. Laura Wright killed these scenes, these emotional scenes about Bobby. I loved it. You know, just this. The shock on her face, the tears in her eyes. I can't wait to see these funeral scenes, though, because I know the emotion is going to be running high um, for Barbara Jean. I think they're going to write it as she died in her sleep or something like that, because I don't think they really told Carly like what happened so far. Um, maybe they told her on the phone, but she hasn't said what happened. But I think they probably going to write it as she probably had some like medical issue or something like that, that maybe she didn't tell the family about or whatever. Maybe she just passed peacefully in her sleep or something. Um, but to get that no like to get that news on New Year's is crazy. You know what I'm saying? That that's not the way that you would want to start the New Year's hearing that that you know your mom passed. Like that's rough. Like I'm really gonna miss Bobby. Mm. But um yeah, that was pretty much the whole episode though. Hit the comment section, let me know what you all thought, and I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.